The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 23rd chapter, beginning at the 50th verse. Now there was a man named Joseph from the Jewish town of Arimathea. He was a member of the council, a good and righteous man who had not consented to their decision and action, and he was looking for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down and wrapped it in a linen shroud and laid him in a tomb cut in stone where no one had ever yet been laid. It was the day of preparation and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
he is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The first reading of the resurrection of our Lord is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. 
To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they shall see him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. She turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. John 20, 14. This is the text. Mary the Magdalene, he called her by name, Mary. And she whirled, turning as on a dime divine, and said, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus responded, do not cling to me. Obviously, she already was, all safe distancing aside that first resurrection morn. What strikes me is that he didn't say a pre-cybernetic, hey woman. He called her by name. Her Lord and Savior called her by her precious name, Mary, which means beloved lady. And she was beloved by him, her risen Lord whom she had seen, her Savior dear. The Easter good news includes this. He knows your name too and calls you by it. He knows you and me well with all our sins and iniquities. The risen one knows us and we are numbered among a myriad of beloved forgiven sinners now sanctified who call him by name, Jesus, Jesus, one who saves. That's what his name means. He saves from sin death and hell with forgiveness, life, and eternal salvation and calls you by name to go to work for him in the love and service of others. Labor offered in his holy name, loving as you are able, your neighbor as yourself, Mark 12, 31, in varied but somehow ways even in the midst of a pandemic plague. What does your name mean? Google it up, not now, please, but soon. And connect your naming with your being in Christ, the risen one forever. And in light of your name and its meaning, to what does he call you right now? What, after all, is in a name? Identification, recognition, connection. Yes, all three. Your name was called in holy baptism. You were identified as Christ's beloved sister or brother, son or daughter of God, his father and ours. John 20, 17. And concerning recognition, are you and I recognizable as Christians in our words and deeds? Good Lord risen, forgive us when it is not so. Are we connected? Yes, When we in faith cling closely to him in the Holy Eucharist, we celebrate his very presence. Think his body and his blood. That's close. William Lamartine Thompson, Anno Domini 1847 to 1906, wrote a fine text and tune about sanctified holy name calling turning the phrases as if on a dime, prophesying, proclaiming, petitioning, and praying. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Can't you just hear him calling your name? 
Patiently, Jesus is waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me by name? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Come home, come home, ye who are weary. Any pandemic weariness out there? Come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling your name, written in the Lamb's book of life. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus by name, didst call and sanctify the Magdalene, Mary by name, to be a witness to his mighty resurrection. Mercifully grant by thy grace that we, named as your very own, may be healed from all our infirmities and always serve thee in the power of endless life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. May God, who through the water of holy baptism raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.